Hi, welcome back to our ongoing series around the seven tenants this year. This month's topic is a interesting one. This one is all about process models within the organization. If I haven't had an opportunity to meet you before, my name is Jonathan Kraft. I work on the advisory services team. So let's go ahead and let's just jump into our conversation today. When we think about process models within the seven tenants, it really covers a couple areas. The first one is the idea around what are the process models around a framework or specifically within the organization. The other area is the process knowledge required to support the execution of those processes. So when we think about process models and the forms that they come in, the design behind this, whether it is a process classification framework within APQC, maybe you're in IT and you use COBIT or ITIL, maybe you're in supply chain and you use SCORE, it doesn't matter which one you use from a framework perspective, or if it's not even a framework, maybe it's a RACI chart, maybe it's a SIPOC, maybe it's a knowledge map within the organization. The idea behind that is to say, we need to outline the what an organization has to do. And we wanna make sure that's a standard document. And again, as I mentioned, it may, become, may come in many forms, but the organization needs to agree on, this is the document that we go to that we can say, this is the what the organizations do. And that's why we typically find the framework being such a powerful document for organizations is that it outlines the what they do and the how is up to them. And we'll talk about that at a different time. But creating that standardization around the process model is actually really, really important. The other area, and we don't talk about this often enough, and we don't even see our clients or our members talk about this often enough, is the idea around the process knowledge required to support the execution of activities within an organization. And really making sure that you are using that process model to capture that process knowledge that exists. So a little bit earlier, I mentioned some of the other forms that a process model could typically come in. Let me give you an example here around some of the process knowledge. You could use a knowledge map to say, these are the steps or the activities that we have to execute as an organization in order to execute our processes, in order to get the widgets out the door, whatever, whatever the case may be. The nice thing around a process model if you're using a knowledge map is you have the opportunity to say, this is where we might have gaps in our, in our process and we can use a process model to help execute that through, through a knowledge map. Another nice way to, to leverage a process model is that if you are using APQC's framework or as an example, or any framework that has a hierarchy structure, it does have that decomposition where you can actually tag essentially knowledge articles or knowledge execution processes and thoughts on that, that hierarchy. It makes it really easy for organizations to understand from a training perspective, from a new hire perspective, what do we need to make sure our individuals know? What gaps potentially exist from a knowledge process within, excuse me, our knowledge perspective within our process, and how do we potentially close that? So it's a really, really powerful tool. And if you had a chance to view my blog on this topic, when we think about process knowledge, excuse me, we think about process models, one of the analogies that I like to use is if you just think about it as your kitchen. So if you go into your kitchen, you typically have the items in your kitchen arranged or organized in what makes the most sense to you. You have your shelf stable items within the pantry. You have your cold items, obviously, within the refrigerator or the freezer. You have your pots and pans located in the same place. You have the uh, silverware located in the same place. And we probably all have that junk drawer in our office, in our kitchen, that nobody really knows what's in there. But if you're looking for something, that's where it may be. It's all designed and organized and what makes the most sense for you and for your family. The process models are, again, typically designed the same way. They're typically functionally aligned or functionally arranged or oriented so that all of those activities that happen within human capital management, within the management of your finance processes are all found in those areas. So don't be afraid to use a process model, really leverage a process model. There are a ton of research notes on our resource library to give you some insights in terms of how to, to use a process model or if you have insights on the framework and you're interested in how organizations are applying it, we have a ton of case studies on that and even a couple of videos out there for you to potentially leverage as well. So continue to leverage the process models. We love to see organizations say, yes, we have a framework. Yes, we've been using a framework. If it's APQCs, again, great. If it's not, the idea is that you do have a, a process model that you leverage within your organization. So go ahead and continue to check out our blog. Hope these have been uh, interesting and meaningful for you from an individual and organizational perspective and hope to have the opportunity to connect and look and work with you soon. Thanks and have a great day.